Meantime, police are also investigating an early morning shooting that left a teenager dead on Sunday. The incident unfolding near Awa Key and vendors there telling Arthur Sealy today that they're tired of the incessant crime in the adjacent areas, which they say continues to threaten their livelihood. Here's that report. A dark cloud hanging over the Arawak Key area yet again following the shooting death of 19-year-old Candace Clark early Sunday morning. The incident said to be connected to large gatherings at Junkanoo Village behind Arawak Key proper, and this isn't the first time that a life has been lost in that same vicinity. Now, what's baffling for most is the frequency of these events with a police station sitting just yards away. Vendors at Arawak Key who didn't want to appear on camera today say there is a bigger issue which has led to the frequency of these incidents and what appears to be the lack of an iron fist falling to solve them. Some vendors telling me today that the Junkanoo Village area is allegedly being leased to an owner by a policeman and those vendors tell me that's why the area has yet to be shut down even though it's a hot spot for crime. Vice President of the Arawak Key Vendors Association, Lillian Laramore Smith, says the violence at the back of the fish fry area is bad for business, which is just beginning to rebound. My friend, she just told me even today, she said, I didn't bring my family out on the weekend because of that. No, you, we, we need to be able to talk to persons and, and, and let them know that you can come out to Arawaki, have a conch salad and dine with us without having any, any problems or without feeling fair. Now vendors here on Arawaki will tell you that there's another problem brewing as well. They say that not only can officers not handle what seems to be recurring violent incidents at the back of Arawaki near Junkanoo Village, but they say they're also closing this gate here at the entrance of Arawaki proper, which as you would imagine creates two major problems for them. They say it not only funnels business away from their stalls, but it creates a safety hazard as thousands of people are funneled this way to the back of Arawaki every weekend. Traffic still is able to meander straight to the back, and so there's a flow of traffic still going. And maybe if they were to block the traffic going to the back also, then we'd have, to, we'd have some type of control on what goes in the back and what can stay to the front. Whenever there's a fight in the back there, you would see like, like 60, 70 of them running and trampling and people and those kids falling down. And it's only on those nights when, when they're piled up in the back there. So I, I, I'm, I'm not asking. I'm telling you it is an hazard. It is a hazard. According to Eyewitness News records, Clark's death took the country's murder count to 102 for the year. Police say she was sitting in a vehicle with another woman when a man wearing a hoodie approached that vehicle and opened fire. Clark died on the scene. An outpouring of condolences for the victim on social media today... A woman who says she taught Clark described her as one of her hardest working students who was passionate about culinary arts. Now, while police say they are hunting for a hooded male, there are some suggesting that it could have been a woman wearing a hoodie. Police have yet to confirm if closed circuit television in the area might be helping them to piece together this early morning shooting, which cut the life of that teen short, just three weeks shy of her 20th birthday. The O'Seeley Eyewitness News.